What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. We can all agree that bass fishing electronics make finding bass offshore a lot easier. Whether you're using 2D sonar, down imaging, side imaging, or forward facing sonar, all of these views allow you to identify if there are fish on a specific spot away from the shoreline out in the middle of the lake. However, there are actually times when bass won't show up on a fish finder on any of the views I just mentioned, and you can actually catch fish off spots without seeing any fish on your electronics. These are very sneaky schools of fish, almost invisible to anglers who don't know what they're looking for. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can identify spots that are holding fish, but that don't actually show any fish on your electronics. Let's get into it. I got the idea for this video from the recent Bassmaster Open on Lake Cherokee. Cooper Gallant won the tournament fishing a Demiki rig on offshore rock piles. He caught some really nice smallmouth, but he mentioned that he wasn't able to see any of the fish he caught during this tournament offshore on his forward-facing sonar, whether that's Garmin Live Scope, Lorance Active Target, or Hummingbird Mega Live. Guys were actually fishing around him in his areas, and they would graph around with traditional sonar, down imaging, side imaging, and see the rocks down on the bottom, but they wouldn't see any bass around those rocks with their electronics. They would then drop the live scope or other type of forward-facing sonar in the water, scan around on those exact same spots, and again, not see any fish show up. This would then cause those anglers to just leave and they completely miss that these areas were actually holding fish, but they weren't visible on the electronics. What Cooper mentioned is that he was able to take a Demiki rig, which is a small fluke style bait rigged on a jig head with a vertical line tie. This is a 3 8 ounce Demiki rig head and then a little Jenko fishing tremor shad, just a three inch bait. I'll link a few other baits that these guys use in this tournament down in the description below if you want to check them out on Tackle Warehouse and want to try this Demiki rig. And the key with this is that he would drop this Demiki rig down right by those rock piles and just leave the bait sitting there for or anywhere from 10, 15, or 20 seconds. After that bait got down there for a little while, the bass that were hiding around the rocks would actually come off the bottom and eat his bait. When he first pulled up on the spot, those bass were tucked so close to the rocks that they wouldn't actually show up on forward-facing sonar, down imaging, or any other type of fish finder. Their bellies were right on the bottom. But after he put that bait down there in close proximity to the rocks, let's say a foot or two off the bottom, those fish would rise out of the rocks, show themselves, and then they would come eat this bait. This is a behavior I've actually observed over a dozen times here on Table Rock Lake and other lakes that have smallmouth in them in my area. And it's something that I've talked about a little bit in my videos, but I've never gone into great depth talking about and kind of explaining how it works. So what I wanna do is show you some old sonar recordings from past fishing trips where I caught smallmouth bass out of rock piles where I actually didn't see them on the electronics and go through some of the techniques I've used in the past in addition to the Demiki rig to give you some ideas about how you can find these hidden schools of fish in these offshore rock piles. My first example is from a video I filmed earlier this year on Lake Ten Killer. I was there at the end of January and the smallmouth were in their winter patterns. I was finding fish around rock piles in 20 to 30 feet of water and catching them on a mega bass spark shad, just a little finesse swim bait. From my past experience fishing for smallmouth, I know that they like to set up around rock piles in the winter time and you don't often actually see that many smallmouth on the graph, whether it's on down imaging or side imaging. If you're lucky, you might be able to spot one smallmouth sticking up over the top of those rocks and you'll see one dot over the top of a rock pile. But more often than not, you just need to actually identify the rock piles with side imaging, then pull up and make a handful of casts. In general, you don't need to make that many casts on these spots before you get bit. And that was what Cooper was talking about on Lake Cherokee as well. He said if he didn't get bit within five or six minutes, he would move on and try another spot. And that's what I always find with these smallmouth, that they're tucked tight to these rocks. I think these fish get so little pressure because they aren't visible on the fish finder that if you can just get a bait around them right away, you can get them to bite pretty easily. Therefore, I'm almost using this finesse swim bait as my fish finder, and I will pull up on these rock piles, throw the swim bait down there. If I don't get bit in three or four casts, I just move on and try another rock pile, and just try to hit as many rock piles as I can over the course of a day. The way I'll fish this bait is just putting on a quarter ounce ball head jig head and on six pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. 
pairing that on the Denali Covert Light, seven foot two medium heavy action spinning rod. And I have a 10 pound floor car or a 10 pound braided line, uh, main line. And I have that six pound leader tied to. Now all I'm doing with this bait is casting it out, letting it sink all the way down to the bottom, which can take a while if you're throwing a quarter ounce head and 30 feet of water. And once that bait hits the bottom, I'm just going to slowly reel that bait in as slow as I possibly can, trying to keep that bait within a foot or two of the bottom. Those fish again are tight to those rocks, so you wanna barely creep that bait across the bottom of the lake. And if those fish are there, they're gonna eat it, and you're gonna be able to put some good ones in the boat. And I'm showing you some fish catches here from that Lake 10 Killer day where I was doing exactly this technique. I've used this pattern dozens of other times on Beaver Lake and Table Rock Lake, and I'll show some other fish catches as well from past trips where I, again, find those rock piles, throw the little swim bait around them, and I'm not relying so much on my fish finder to identify fish, like on down imaging, which you might see in my other videos. Instead, I'm just using the side imaging function to graph good looking rock piles, see if there's fish or see if there's rock down there, and then use my bait to identify if there's fish there. Again, not using my electronics to actually see the fish. This is something that may throw off a lot of guys because you might expect that you need to use your fish finder to actually see fish before you start fishing. But that's not always the case. My next example comes from a video a few years back on Table Rock Lake. I was fishing there in May and the bass were post-spawn. I was fishing rock piles again in 15 to 25 feet of water, but this time with a swing head. This is just a three quarter ounce swing head that I got off of eBay with a four out hook. And I'm pairing that with a four inch Strike King Menace Grub in the green pumpkin color. In this video, I actually caught spotted bass and smallmouth off of offshore rock piles where again, I was not seeing any fish on the actual fish finder. All I was finding were the rock piles themselves. On Table Rock, they actually drop rock piles. They're made by the Game and Fish and you can get the GPS waypoints for those straight from their website. I'll leave a link down below where you can get those waypoints and transfer them straight for, to your fish finder. And I basically just took those rock pile waypoints from the Game and Fish, started pulling up on them, making five or six casts. And if I got bid on the first five or six casts, I would stay and keep catching them. And if I didn't, I would move on. And this is definitely different from how I normally would approach offshore bass fishing. In general, I like to graph offshore to find bait fish and fish, and then I also look for cover in the surrounding areas. But the key to making me stop on an offshore spot is usually the presence of bait fish or the presence of bass that I can actually see on my screen. However, the exception to that rule is when I'm fishing around rock piles. Again, rock piles are basically piles of rocks that are right on the bottom of the lake, and bass will tend to get really tight to the bottom in those rock piles to use those rocks to ambush bait fish that are swimming around. Now, sometimes you'll find that bass are feeding on shad around those rock piles, whether that is a blueback herring, gizzard shad, threadfin shad, some type of shad. And when this is the case, bass are more likely to actually pull off the bottom and you'll be able to see them on the fish finder sitting five or six feet off the bottom. And here's a great image showing exactly this. This is from another video I did a few years back where I was catching fish on a football jig on some offshore rock piles and the bass were actually feeding on shad around those rocks. In this image, you can see the school of shad, you can see the bass pulling up off the bottom, starting to go feed on those shad, and it's very obvious that there are fish there. However, if those shad weren't there, you may not be able to even know that there were fish in these rocks because those bass would be pushed back down to the bottom and you would just see a black space above those rocks. This was one of those rare cases where I was actually able to catch those bass in the act of leaving the rocks to go eat those bait fish. There's another spot though where I caught a really good fish where I didn't see any bait fish around the rocks and therefore the bass were tight to the bottom and not visible on my down imaging, side imaging, or forward facing sonar. Despite that, I threw my football jig around those rock piles because I knew that there could be a chance that the bass were still there and I caught a really good fish. In addition to shad though, you can also find the bass will feed on crawfish. Those crawfish spend the majority of their time on the bottom down in those rocks and you're not gonna be able to see them on down imaging, side imaging, or forward facing sonar. This means that a lot of the bass are gonna be positioned really tight to the bottom as well. There's gonna be no separation between the bottom of the lake and the bass. They're gonna be right on top of each other. 
The only way you're gonna be able to really see those fish on live scope or on your down imaging is if those bass are up off the bottom just a little bit so there's some separation and you get some black space between the dot you see on the screen and the bottom of the lake. This means you could graph over a rock pile that's absolutely loaded with fish, and if none of those fish are suspended two or three feet off the bottom, you'll never see them on live scope or on down imaging or 2D sonar. Those bass will have their bellies in the bottom and they're practically invisible to the fish finder. But that doesn't mean that they're not catchable or they're not there. I mentioned earlier that crawfish are one of the types of forage that will set up right on the bottom and are invisible to a fish finder, but another one is gobies. Gobies are a type of forage up north, and I'll show you a picture here on the screen. And you also have a southern variant, it's not maybe a variant, but it's very similar, called a sculpin. We have them on Table Rock Lake and Beaver Lake here, and they're these little tiny minnows. They're not actually that small, they're like uh, three or four inches long, and they will set up on the bottom in those rock piles, and that's what a lot of the smallmouth feed on year round here in my region of the country. They also have them out in California, and it is a very overlooked forage for these bass. A lot of guys will ca get caught up in the shad, and they'll think if the shad aren't in the area, there's not gonna be any bass. But what I found is if I graph for a mile offshore and don't see any shad in the general area, but I see a lot of rock piles, there's a pretty good chance that there may be some fish setting up in those rock piles feeding on sculpin or on crawfish, and I'm just not seeing the crawfish or the sculpin on my graph or seeing the fish on the graph because they're so tight to those rocks. That's when you need to use your powers of deductive reasoning to determine if there's going to be fish in those rocks based on, again, bait fish activity, based on how good the rock piles look, the type of lake you're on, the water clarity, the season of the year. There's so many factors that kind of go into whether this pattern will work. But what I do know is that this pattern works year round in every single season of the year and also for all three species of bass, spotted bass, largemouth, and spotted bass. I've actually caught fish out of rock piles in as shallow as two or three feet of water when the water had six inches of water visibility to it and also in 40 feet of water when the lake had 10 feet of water visibility to it. It's a pretty versatile pattern as long as you still have rocks in your lake. If there's no rocks, it doesn't really work. And also if you have the forage that can support those fish being in those rocks. The other thing is you wanna make sure you adjust your presentations so that you're able to target those fish effectively. For example, a Demiki rig is a great bait when you wanna get vertical over the top of those rock piles that are a little bit deeper in clear water. If you want to stay a little bit further away from those fish, you can throw a, a little finesse swim bait like this, the Mega Bass Spark Shad, cast that bait out and reel it really slow by those rocks if you want to keep your distance. If you're fishing a little bit further offshore in deeper, clear water, you can throw a football jig like my Fish Moment Offshore jig. Or if you want to fish in shallower, dirtier water, you can throw a bait like a swing head with a biffle bug. This is just a 3 16 or 5 16 pound swing head with a beefier trailer that has a lot of action and it will call those fish's attention even when the water has a foot of visibility and those fish are setting up in four to six feet in those rock piles. The rock pile pattern is, again, very versatile and works from the north all the way up in the smallmouth country in New York down to the south in Texas and if you have rocks in your lake, it's definitely worth checking out, especially because a lot of anglers will overlook rock piles based on the fact that they can't see fish on their electronics. So definitely check out this pattern, try it out for yourself, and let me know what goes down in the comments below. And that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and if you did, leave a like down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, and it would be great if we could get this video to 1,500 likes. It really helped me out, so definitely leave a like down below, and also subscribe to the Fish Moment YouTube channel if you don't want to miss any of our future uploads. You can also hit the bell notification button to get notified of all of our future uploads so you don't miss any of them. And other than that, guys, thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you all next one.